Good morning. The objective of this video is to learn how to compare and order real numbers given in different forms. Before we can do that, we need to review a few properties here. When you're converting a fraction to a decimal, it's the top divided by the bottom. In this case, we have a 3 fourths would be converted to a decimal by doing 3 divided by 4 in your calculator, and you'll get 0 0.75. To convert a percent to a decimal, you need to divide by 100. You would take 35%, you do 35 divided by 100, and you get 0.35. That you don't have to do in a calculator, because if you remember, the decimal point is here, and dividing by 100 moves the decimal point one, two place values this way which is going to give you the 0.35. So you can convert that without a calculator if needed. We also need to review these symbols here, the greater than symbol, the less than symbol, the equal symbol, which should be obvious. And this symbol here is the approximately equal to sign. Approximately equal to. Now, that's the way I write it. Our textbook writes it with two squiggles rather than one squiggle and a straight line. So you may see it both ways. I don't like this particular symbol because it looks too much like the congruent symbol that's used later on in geometry. All negative numbers are less than any given positive number. That's a property you should remember. Any negative number is going to be less than any positive number. Negative 1 billion is going to be less than 0.1. So we please remember, any negative number is going to be less than any positive number. We also need to go back and think about the terms, the names of different sets of numbers. There is the natural numbers. Those are the counting numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's what the natural number is. One, two, three, four, dot, dot, dot. Whole numbers are the same as the natural numbers, where they have the 1, 2, 3, 4. They also have the 0 included. Integers has all of the negative numbers and the positive numbers. So they're all the whole numbers and their opposites. Rational numbers includes all the integers, all the whole numbers, all the natural numbers, and includes anything that can be expressed as a fraction with the bottom number not being zero, which means any decimal, any mixed number, any fraction, any of those are a rational number. Then there are irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are not included in any of these sets over here. Irrational numbers have never-ending, never-repeating decimals, and those are things like pi, square root of a prime number, and other examples like that. Any multiple of the square root of 3 is going to be an irrational number. It's going to be never-ending, never-repeating decimal. Any multiple of pi is going to be a never-ending, never-repeating decimal. Real numbers includes all of this. It's all the rational, all the irrational, all the integers, whole numbers, and all that. And then, if it's not a real number, it's an imaginary number. Now, there in math, we actually have numbers that are called imaginary numbers. We're not going to be working with them in the eighth grade here, but you are eventually going to see them. They are going to have things like, and the imaginary numbers are based on things with the square root of negative 1. Now, as I told you in class, you can't do the square root of a negative. But they like to take this square root of a negative 1, imaginary numbers, they call it i. And they work with this i, this imaginary number i. Don't worry about it. We're not covering it in eighth grade. But I wanted you to know that such numbers exist. Imaginary numbers are not real numbers. That's why they call them imaginary. All right, here we may be asked to define greater than, less than, or equal to. It's part of comparing numbers. They could be, uh, now, now, in the past we've done this. You've done this since like second grade. But now we're talking about some numbers, including uh, square roots and other things like that. So we want to make sure you completely can and completely understand and be able to compare the different forms. All right. So here we have the square root of 15 and 3.9. Now I know that the square root of 16 is 4. So I know that that is pretty close to foreign value, and that's pretty close to foreign value. 
So I can't really estimate this. I'm going to have to actually find out what the square root of 15 is. So I turn on my calculator. I hit 15 square root, and that gives me 3.872 dot, dot, dot. Now, looking at the second, the first decimal place here, comparing those first decimal places, that's the lowest place, that the place value this has, and as this is an 8, that's a 9, which makes this greater than this. So the gator mouth needs to be pointing towards the 3.9, it's a less than symbol. Over here, we got 8.2 repeating, remember that bar means repeating, so this is actually 8.2222 dot dot dot, it just keeps going as 8.2222222. Here we have 8 and 2 ninths. Well, we have to actually find out what the 2 ninths is as a decimal in order to compare this. So we do 2 divided by 9, top divided by bottom to get the fraction value, and I get 0.2 repeating. So this is 8.2 repeating, which means that these two are equal. Here I've got the square root of 17 and 4. Now I know that the square root of 16 is equal to 4. Since I know the square root of 16 is equal to 4, and I've got the square root of 17 here, I know this has actually got to be greater than 4 in value. I don't have to touch my calculator. I just know that this is going to be greater than 4 in value. I put the greater than symbol there, the gator mouth pointing towards the square root of 17. Other way to compare that? If you're not sure, when you've got a square root and a whole number here, what you can do is you square the whole number. Four squared is four squared is equal to 16. Compare the radicand, the number underneath the radical, and that number there, and you get 17 being larger than 16. It's definitely going to be a greater than value. Over here, we've got two and one fifth which I know as a decimal is going to be 2.2. .2. How do I know? Because I've worked with 1 fifth before and I know that 1 fifth is 0.2. Otherwise you top divide by bottom and you're going to get 0.2. Over here I've got 5.29. I don't know what the square root of that is. So I'm going to have to put a log into the calculator. 5.29, hit square root. It's going to give me 2.3. 2.3. You do the square root, uh, they do the less than symbol there, move on. Converting to decimals is the key here. The decimals are the easiest numbers to compare. You've been comparing place values for a long, long time. Don't want to change that. Still compare the place values. To do that, you need to convert to decimal values. Same thing is true for ordering from greatest to least. From least to greatest, or greatest to least. Either way they ask you. This, in this case, they're asking us from least to greatest. Now, looking at these, right, I can see a lot of 5.01s, but this one has the 1 repeating, this one has a 0, 1 repeating, this one has nothing repeating, and this is a square root of 26, which is pretty close to 5 in value. First thing I'd like to do is I want to find out what the square root of 26 is, because that's the, the oddball out. It does not have 5.01. Let's find out what it is. So I do 26, I hit square root and I get 5.0990195, and it probably continues on from there, but that's where my calculator ends. 5.09, that's greater than one in that last decimal place there. See, that's one, 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 the last decimal place, the second, the hundreds there, that's the one they all have in common there. That's greater than 1. So this one's got to be the largest. So I know my square root of 26 is going to be at the end. Here I've got 5.01. Here I've got 5.01 repeating, which is actually 5.011111. Well, these match all the way up to here, but then this one's got more. Since this one continues and has more, it's got to be greater than this in value. Not by much, but it is greater than this in value. So the smallest is going to be 5.01. Because this, although it's got the 5.01 here, it's also the same as that, it continues to the 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So it has to be greater than this in value because it does continue just like this one continues.
But when you look, look at the third place value here, on this one, you have a 1. 5.011, 5.010. The third place value in the, in the decimals here is less than 1. So this one is smaller than this one. So the 5.01 repeating with the 01 repeating is going to be less than the 5.01 with the 1 repeating. All right, down here we need to convert. Uh, we got Now this is already in decimal form, this is in decimal form, these two are not. 17% to convert the percent to a decimal, we said we need to divide by 100. So that's going to get 0 0.17. One fifth, as we said earlier, is going to be 0 0.2. Negatives are always going to be less than any positive value. So the negative 0 0.02 is definitely our smallest. Next one up, 0.17 is going to be less than 0.2. It's going to be less. A lot of people say 17 is less than greater than 2, but it's 0.1. We're looking at I got to compare like place values. Compare those like place values. One is less than two. Two is going to be greater than 0.17. So I'm going to do the 17 percent. Then the 0.2, which is one fifth, and then last but not least, actually the least, the greatest is the 17. Again, we're comparing place values. You do. Take a moment, pause the video, try these, come back. Welcome back. 1.5, 3.2. Convert this to a decimal. 3 divided by 2 gives you 1.5. These are equal. Square root of 5 is going to give you 5. Square root, you're going to get 2.23 and more after that. But 2.2 is greater than 2.1, so the gator mouth goes towards the square root of 5. 10 squared is 100. Square root of 10 is going to be about 3. It's going to be 3 point something. I, I can see that's the only one that's even close to that value, so I'm going to stay there. Square root of 100 is going to be 10. 10% 10 is going to be 0 0.10, dividing it by 100. So now we can compare. We start with the smallest, which has got to be that negative. Negative 300 is the smallest. The next one up is a 3, square root of 10. Oops, no it's not. Ah, I forgot the decimal value there. There's the decimal of 0.10, so 10% comes next. Then comes the square root of 10. Then comes the square root of 100. Then comes the 10 squared. 3, 10, 100. All right, last one here. We have 3.2 repeating. This 1 fifth again is 0 0.2, so this is 3.2. This, we did the square root. We know it's going to be close to 3, but now we have to actually calculate it because we're not sure if it's going to be greater than or less than these 3.2s here. So we do 10 square root, and I get 3.1622 continues on from there. 0 and negative. Well, I don't have to calculate that. I've already calculated it, but I know it's going to be negative. So it's the only negative number. It's definitely the lowest value. After that, the next lowest value is going to be the zero. Don't forget the zero. A lot of people, when they do this ordering, they just completely forget the zero because there's a zero in there. Then the next one is going to be a 3.16 because the, the second place value, which we're comparing here, the first, sorry, first decimal value, which we compare, is going to be 2, 2, 1, which means that this is smaller. So the square root of 10 is the next one up. After that, this is just 3.2, this is 3.22222, so this one has more after that 2, which means that 3 and 1 fifth is going to be less than 3.2 repeating. See you in class. I need any available staff to the patio for assistance, please. Any